Hi you guys, I'm Julia and welcome to this week's What's For Dinner video. To kick this week off, we made this delicious chicken and wild rice soup. It's actually a recipe from my friend BevXO over at her channel. She made it during one of her cleaning videos, so I decided to give it a try this week. So I started out by cutting two cups of carrots into smaller pieces, just like this, and then setting them aside in a separate bowl. I used the baby carrots because that's what I had on hand, but you could use any type of carrots you have. Next, I did the same thing with celery. I also used two cups of celery. So I used more um, vegetables than this recipe called for just because we like thicker soups in our house but if you like thinner soups you could use less vegetables now I have a very large yellow onion so you could use however much onion you want. That's the nice part about this recipe. You could kind of do whatever you want with it. We like a lot of onion in our house, so I use this entire onion. But if you don't care for onion as much, you could definitely use less. I set all my vegetables to the side just like that. And I started working on my Instant Pot. I set it to saute for about 15 minutes and I added, I added two tablespoons of butter right in there. And I just let it melt down and come up to a simmer just like that. And then when it looks like that, you are ready to pour your vegetables on in there. I continuously stirred those vegetables until they got softened. So it took me about 15 minutes, but just depending on how many vegetables you add, just look to see if they are tender. So now I'm adding two large chicken breasts in there with those vegetables. For the seasonings, I just poured a little bit of this garlic salt on top of those chicken breasts, just like that. I used about an eighth of a teaspoon if you were wondering. Next, I just seasoned it with some pepper to taste. Now with a teaspoon of oregano, I'm just pouring it on top of all of that yumminess. Now you're gonna go ahead and add your four cups of chicken broth right in there with the rest of the ingredients. I went ahead and gave it a good stir just so those seasonings got all up in the rest of the ingredients. And then I went ahead and put my Instant Pot lid on and made sure it was set to sealing. And I put it on high pressure for about 40 minutes. To be quite honest with you guys, this recipe was super simple to make. The most time consuming part of it was probably cutting the vegetables, but that wasn't bad at all. So you definitely wanna give this recipe a try. After those 40 minutes were up, I just took my little shredder gadget like right here, and I just shredded up that chicken just like that until it got into smaller pieces. Once again, I am turning my Instant Pot on to saute mode and I am adding this box of Uncle Ben's long grain and wild rice. I am including the seasoning packet in there too. You could also use the um, rice aroni wild rice, but I only had the Uncle Ben's on hand, so that worked perfectly. Right now, directly into that soup, I'm adding a cup of milk. So the recipe called for two cups of milk, but like I said earlier, we like our soups thicker, so I only added a cup. Next, I'm just adding a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up. The cornstarch slurry was only a teaspoon of cornstarch with about two to three teaspoons of water. 
and that's supposed to help thicken the soup up as well. I left it on low level saute mode for about 20 minutes and then I stirred it continuously the entire time and this is what it looked like after. The rice was perfectly cooked through and it did not lack in flavor like I said before. This was absolutely amazing and you're definitely gonna wanna give this a try because it was just so, so simple. We also topped it with some Parmesan cheese and some parsley for color on top. And this recipe was definitely a hit and I will be making it again. For this night's dinner, I made these loaded baked um, burritos. So to start out with these burritos, I just added this box of rice aroni cilantro lime rice into my little pot. And I just followed those instructions on the box, just how to cook that rice. You could also add um, Spanish style rice or white rice, whatever rice your family prefers. But we really like this cilantro lime rice and it is just so simple to cook. While that rice is cooking right there, I went ahead and I started on cooking my chicken. So into my Instant Pot, I added two cups of water, followed by a tablespoon of taco seasoning mix. I just use the McCormick. Next, I just whisk that together just so that gets incorporated with the water and there's no lumps. Next, I added two chicken breasts on in there. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on high pressure for about 17 minutes and always make sure your Instant Pot is set to sealing or it just won't turn out. Once that chicken is cooked, I just went ahead and shredded it with, with my whisk right here. So I had a suggestion a few weeks ago to use a hand mixer to shred my chicken and I totally forgot to do that but I was definitely going to, so thank you for your suggestion. But I also added about an eighth of a teaspoon more of that taco seasoning, and then I went ahead and put my cooked rice in there with a chicken, followed by my can of black beans. I did drain and rinse those black beans before I stuck them in there. And I'm just going ahead and stirring that mixture just so it gets incorporated together. Now I am adding this red chili enchilada sauce. I put a fourth of a tablespoon in there and then I'm just going to mix it together to combine it. Now for the fun part, I have these super large burrito style, burrito style tortillas. You definitely want to get the large tortillas, not the smaller ones. It just makes these burritos that much better, I think. So I just added a little bit of cheese to the bottom of my tortilla, and then I added about a cup and a half of that rice, bean, and chicken mixture on top, and then I tried to fold those burritos up, and then I put them in a nine by 13 baking dish just like that. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rest of that enchilada sauce directly on top of the three burritos I made. Now I'm just putting some more of that cheese on top. You could just add however much cheese your family likes. My family really loves cheese, or I should say I really love cheese. But then after you're done with that, it goes in the oven. And here is what it looks like when it is finished. Honestly, these burritos were definitely better than any um, loaded burrito I have ever gotten at a Mexican restaurant. And that's crazy for me to say, 
but these were so delicious and you definitely want to go ahead and give them a try. I just served it with some guacamole, sour cream, cherry tomatoes, and some salsa on the side. So now here is this night's dinner. I just made this cream cheese, um, tomato, basil, pesto, chicken. So you start by getting six ounces of cream cheese and you want that cream cheese to be softened. So ideally you're gonna wanna leave it out for a few hours, but I'm not that organized. So this cream cheese was definitely cold and it did make it harder to combine with the rest of the ingredients. You'll see that here in a minute. So next I'm just going to go ahead and add a fourth of a cup of this sun-dried tomato basil pesto. Now with a fourth a cup of this mozzarella cheese, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to that bowl with those other ingredients. Now I'm just going to go ahead and stir those ingredients together just like that. This is when the cream cheese was a little bit harder to stir together because it was seriously so cold, um, but it may do just fine. So now directly on top of my two large chicken breasts, I'm just adding that cream cheese and that mixture on top. Um, one thing that I would do differently next time with this recipe is I would cut those chicken breasts in half just so they're not as thick, um, but they turned out delicious. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of that mozzarella cheese on top and then I'm gonna go stick it in the oven. Once that's in the oven, I'm just gonna be making some mashed potatoes because my husband was asking for some mashed potatoes for the past few weeks and I just haven't gotten around to making them. So I thought I would make him a bunch of mashed potatoes to go along with that chicken. So I use my onion chopper to chop those mashed, to chop those potatoes into small pieces. I think it just makes it cook faster and less cutting for me. My salad mix had gone bad on this night and I had some carrots, cherry tomatoes, and some cucumber that I had to use up. So I just thought I'd show you guys what I did with it. So I chopped those up and added it together. Then I added some of this dried cranberry and honey roasted almonds on top of that. And I just gave that a good stir. Now I'm gonna be adding this creamy garlic parmesan directly on top of that. So I find this creamy garlic parmesan dressing at Walmart and my husband and I really, really like it. And we highly suggest it. So now coming back over to those potatoes, once they're softened to fork tender from boiling in that big pot of water, <clears throat> I just put them in this large bowl to go ahead and mash up. I put about a tablespoon of butter on in there with some dried chives and some salt and pepper to taste. I also added a little splash of milk. So I don't make my mashed potatoes very fancy at all. I just think simple is best in some situations. So that's how I make my mashed potatoes and I thought I'd show you guys today. I always mash them with my electric mixer because for some reason I just don't have a potato masher. I really need to get myself one though. Now when your chicken breasts only have about 10 minutes left of cooking, you're gonna pull them out and you're gonna start on your 
breadcrumb mixture. So I added a tablespoon of butter into my microwave safe bowl and then I added about a fourth of a cup of breadcrumbs to go along in there with it. And then I just gave it a good stir so it got incorporated together. And then you're gonna wanna put those on top of your chicken breasts. So the recipe really didn't call for this, but I just thought it would make the chicken that much better, and it seriously did. So you're gonna wanna put those breadcrumbs on top of your chicken breasts and then stick them back in the oven for about 10 minutes until they're golden brown just like this. So here's everything when it is all finished and plated up. These chicken breasts were super delicious and those breadcrumbs seriously added a crazy yumminess to it. So you're definitely gonna wanna give this recipe a try. So for our meatless meal of the week, I decided to make this quinoa salad. I just drained and rinsed a cup of quinoa and then I added it to two cups of water here on the stove and I let that come up to a boil and then I put it on simmer with the lid on for about 15 to 20 minutes. To go in with the quinoa, I added uh, two cloves of garlic. I typically add about a half of an onion too to give it a little bit extra flavor, but my baby was kind of fussy so I just didn't have time to add the onion today. I just added the garlic. But I also added a little bit of onion powder to, stub to substitute the onion. So here it is and then I'm just gonna put the lid on and let that cook. Like I said before, this was a super simple salad. So I just gave myself some spring mix followed by some of that quinoa. That quinoa came out perfectly cooked and it was definitely flavorful. I typically think quinoa lacks in flavor. So if you're gonna make quinoa, you definitely should try adding um, a little bit of onion with some g fresh garlic. It will definitely make a difference. Also on that salad, we added some cherry tomatoes and some cucumber. And you guys already know I can't have a meal without cheese, so I put some sharp cheddar cheese on top, of course. And then also I added some of this dried cranberries and roasted almonds on top. For the dressing on top, I use this Bolthouse Classic Yogurt Ranch dressing. And to be quite honest with you guys, this dressing is my favorite dressing of all time. I don't typically like ranch from the grocery stores, but woo, this ranch is amazing. It's definitely worth um, giving a shot and trying. I loved it. But here's the salad once it is all finished. For this night, we just made some simple beef burritos and I'm just gonna show you guys how we make our simple beef burritos. So I just have a pound of lean ground beef here and then I'm adding about a teaspoon of this taco seasoning while it's cooking along in with it. Now, so I have these instant home style refried beans. If you've never tried them, I highly suggest them. So I just put them in the pot and I just followed the um, instructions on the back how to cook them. But seriously, these are my favorite refried beans of all time. I just think they taste the most authentic and they're just so, so, so good. Now once your ground beef is totally cooked through and browned, you're gonna wanna drain the um, grease out of it. However you choose to do so, I always do so with a paper towel. And then I'm adding about three tablespoons of this McCormick taco seasoning to go 
along inside of that beef. So here's when I do things a little bit different than the traditional way of making tacos. So I always add beef bouillon instead of water. I just think it gives it quite a bit more flavor and I just think it makes the beef taste way better. To give the tortillas a nice little crunch and to make them taste more like their restaurant style, I like to add a little bit of this canola oil on the tortillas just like this. I add it on front and back and then I just place it on the stove. Now onto my hot cooking pan, just like this. I just went ahead and added my flour tortillas. I just did it one by one until they got bubbly just like this. And then I went ahead and flipped it and let it bubble up on the other side and let those tortillas get crisp, but they're still soft and delicious. Here's that beef after it is totally cooked through and those delicious beans that I was telling you guys how much I loved. So here I am just plating everything up. Of course, I have some sharp cheddar cheese and then I put those beans on top just like that. With a little bit of that ground beef and on the side I have some sour cream, cherry tomatoes and some salsa with some guacamole. And that was dinner for this last night. I hope each of you guys enjoyed this video and got a little bit of meal inspiration for your upcoming week through these delicious meals. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below the video just so you never miss any more of these delicious what's for dinner videos. I hope you guys have a great week this week and have a good day. Bye-bye.